So it's Robert from Permaboss. I feel kind of funny because I feel like a news reporter or the uh, anchor on uh, Saturday Night Live. But the purpose of this video is because I was answering emails in writing and I thought it would be great to summarize all of these. And people don't have a lot of time to read, but they can listen to this really quickly. So I'm just going to go through questions. And this is, that, that noise is uh, Maxie, my dog, by the way. So of course she has to move right when we start the video. So. These are questions related to Permaboss and how we make the guarantee, the business being profitable, 90 days. And the questions come from, and I'll just go through them and answer them quickly, but they come from all kinds of people. But some of these specific ones come from somebody that's been doing their research for probably a year now, the gentleman. He's based in Europe. He's a very, very small business. And the questions were just so pertinent I thought I'd share. So he's just saying, you know, hope you're doing well. How are you? And he wants to go back to the old emails. And the first thing I write is, you know, I'm going to be tough and I'm going to be honest, so be prepared. I'm not going to dilly-dally. I'm going to hit the point and put it like right to bed, right to rest, right there. So some people don't like that format and I appreciate that, but I want to be really clear. So he says, you know, I've been regularly watching your videos on YouTube. If you would subscribe to them, then you'd see that there's 200 videos and you'd see the progression. It's hard to go back and watch 200 videos, but if you're going to spend a certain, kind, a certain amount of money, you'll find out very quickly what's related to you and what's not. It's the best way to do the research right now because everything's live and unedited, etc. So um, the videos are from South Africa, they're from Australia, they're from all over Europe and UK, all over Canada and all the corners of the United States, and I don't think there's any Spanish ones yet because sometimes we can't interview in certain languages. But there's more than 200 videos on the Permaboss laser alone and there's hundreds of ones on rhinestone embossing combined. So the gentleman says, I'm still looking for ways to expand my business. I didn't win the lottery yet with the, you know, the LOL there. And I said, don't think like that because in all the years I never found a lottery winner who could generally manage a business. Most people who manage a business manage it well because they started from zero. They had to work for everything, they had to put in the hours, they had to put in the blood, sweat and tears. And many people, it's documented in books, etc. when they win the, win the lottery, they're worse off in five or six or ten years, even though they won more than maybe you and me might even earn in our lifetimes. So I say, don't take offense, but think about the thousands of small business owners who take some sort of action every day to grow their business. And I don't mean by buying a lottery ticket, I mean by making a sales call, making a sample, getting something out, and just communicating and working and working. And that's what makes a difference. And I ask, how have you grown? If somebody's researching me for a year, then this is the question. I'm saying, you know, how have you grown since that time we first talked and communicated? How have you grown as a person? How have you grown as a business person, a business owner? How has the business grown? And if the changes haven't occurred that are relatively dramatic, you know, like you haven't even in, in a year grown your business 20, 30, 40 percent, then what's wrong? And we're saying that our equipment is so different and so unique in the industry that you can have these leaps and growths. We internally have a goal of 10 times growth and that sounds insane, but if I miss the goal, that's fine. So in our first year, we doubled the growth. First year on this new thinking, we doubled our growth. Why are we making it so aggressive? Because I have to practice what I preach and I have to teach you people in these seminars and in the tutoring that goes on after you buy the equipment. We'll get to that in a minute on how to do the same for yourself. So if I'm not practicing what I'm preaching, how good of a teacher am I? All right. Um, you know, it takes small changes every day and that piles up to big changes in a year and year after year that becomes huge things. But you have to learn how to leverage yourself. You have to learn how to be more effective. And one example I always have is why are you cutting the grass and shoveling the snow? Because you can pay other people to do that type of work. So my example is I don't want to do those two things because I can either be with my family or I could be communicating, selling machines and growing the business. So I can pay somebody to do that grunt work and they'll do it more effectively. For me, it's 35 bucks for a landscaper. Three people come in in 45 minutes or whatever with all their tools are in out. It might take me two hours. I can do a better job than the typical landscaper. I'll clean the driveway better than the snowplow guy who does it in you know, a lickety split and he's gone and there's lines in everywhere. I make mine clean like, like a plate. But that's not useful time for me. So you have to ask yourself those questions. What have you done to grow your business? Are you learning, studying about marketing things or are you just being busy working, working, working? How many times have I gone to a client, they say, I don't have time. 
and they're doing the screen printing and they're doing the embroidery. But they don't have time to hire somebody or train them, so you need to deal with these challenges and only if you take some sort of action and make a uh, move in some direction and take the action that you can get these types of results. So, um, you know, one of the comments is, I've been searching for on the web for the lady in Hawaii who works with your embroidery machine. I can't find her. I'm looking for comparisons with small business. Remember, mine is tiny. And I wrote, you know, who cares? Because we have 50 customers like her, maybe more. And she's just one of hundreds in America. And this gentleman can be the first in his country. And he's in e EU. He's in Europe. So the unique thing is that what do you care what somebody's doing in Hawaii? How are you going to compare a unique tourist trap to an area where you have no tourists, relative speaking, to Hawaii? That's not a fair comparison. And why don't you pick somebody who's not like you? Why don't you have a goal to pick somebody bigger? So for us, I've got mentors in the town of Aurora that are significantly bigger, wealthier uh, companies and organizations that manufacture, and I've befriended them. And I take them a lunch, I'll have a beer with them, I'll do them a favor, I'll, I'll give them some shirts with, decorated with our product. And they love to talk to me because I listen. And then I ask questions that they know the answers to because they've been in my shoes. And then I take action and when I follow up with them, I say thank you and I appreciate it. But I take action. I cannot go to a university or a course and get information like that. One gentleman, literally like I could hit a baseball that far, showed us how to take four days of labor out of the manufacturing of one, our, one of our machines. And then, assisted by making prototypes for us to prove it, and now we use them as a supplier. And he doesn't need to use us as a customer, but he just likes the relationship, and somehow it's stimulating for both of us. But that's amazing. And you need to do that. You need to pick people that are bigger than you and not look for people that are your size. What are you going to learn from somebody that's your size and tiny? Learn from somebody who's bigger and emulate and grow and, and go that direction. So though we like uh, your approach a lot, we keep having loads of questions. So again, remember I said to be blunt. You know, you can ask a million questions, but you're still in the same place where you were a year ago. And, you know, or, or more. I don't know how long it's been exactly. I could look it up. You know, you could have been selling a new product, a new decoration, a new service for one year already. You could have had that 20, 30% or double growth in your business a year ago. So how long does it take? How much research are you going to do? Are you going to be paralyzed by analysis, you know, paralysis by analysis? Or are you going to take some sort of action to make a difference? I understand you have to do basic research. And if you're watching this video the first time, you'd probably be offended. But if you're taking six months to a year to make a decision or even longer, then it's kind of interesting because that might be a personality that isn't conducive to having big growth. So you need to overcome that. And that's not me saying it, that's experience. Well, I did say it, but it's experience from seeing thousands of business owners and you know, proposing and pitching and selling and presenting to maybe tens of thousands over the years. And you start to see a pattern of people who can actually grow their business and people who are very comfortable at being busy. They like, you know, like a busy worker bee. And that's fine if you don't want to change. But I really think that as a decorator, if you had our equipment made by Permaboss, especially if you have the combination, many of our most successful clients now have one or more machines. They have two or three. Those clients work less than the average decorator, and we are training them and creating a system now where they have Fridays at 1 o'clock off. So 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday, Fridays 1 o'clock off, and don't work on weekends. Why? Because you can set your own rules in your own baseball park. You can get organized that way as a business owner. You can take time off. If you're not, then you have a job, and that's a problem. If you're a business owner, you need to have a business owner kind of life, which is better than banker's hours is what it should be. And you need to be productive and profitable and work less by working smarter. So you have to understand that there are possibilities to do that. You didn't become a business owner to work more hours than your employees. It's actually shocking when I see what business owners take out of the business. And then you divide the hours they work. And they are paying themselves less than the guys who are cleaning the floor. That's a problem. And be honest with yourself and ask yourself, how many hours a week am I working? And what am I paying myself? And stop using the excuse, well, I'm putting all the money back in the business, I'm leaving it, I'm growing it. No, what are you taking out of the business now, this year, to live on, to have fun? Because I've got news for you. 
when the big pearly gates come calling, you're not taking anything with you. You're leaving it all here. That's how much Rockefeller left when he died and he was one of the richest people. That's how much Bill Gates is going to leave and Warren Buffett. They're leaving it all here. They're not taking anything with them. And you and me are going to do the same. So, how much are you making now and what can you make by having new tools and having an open mindset? So, uh, uh, first of all, a remark from my accountant. What about support overseas and the continuity of delivery, spare parts, service, and then in brackets over the years? So we have machines in Thailand and Australia and South Africa, all over every corner of the USA and Canada, uh, Mexico. And in the 13 years, we've sent technicians out probably a total of six times. And one time, a couple months ago, I had a client who was upset and the PC failed. That's not my fault. That's just a failure of a PC. And I basically chartered an airplane and flew down and replaced it personally to basically keep him quiet and make a story out of it because I wanted him to know that we care. And in fact, renting that chartered airplane was cheaper than one of us driving or getting a commercial you know, pilot and a uh, commercial airline ticket and driving to the airport and doing the whole rigmarole. We literally flew down to within 10 minutes of his airport, an airport within 10 minutes of him, did the exchange and came back that afternoon and I got to enjoy something I normally wouldn't and it was like $400. So it was cheaper and quicker than doing overnight FedEx for that box is what it turned out to be quite frankly. So like, if you're in Europe, I mean we, we, we can't do that but we do have FedEx and UPS. The machines have been made basically in such a way that everything is user serviceable and the purpose is, is for us to always send a technician. We don't make an exception. If you buy our equipment, you are getting two days training and there's no exception. Otherwise, I won't sell you my equipment and you have to sign a form that says you can't complain afterwards because that training teaches you how to use your equipment, how it works, why it works the way it does, what has to happen when this happens, when this happens, and you go into a phase of production while our technician is there, and that makes you self-sufficient. Most business models of basically all our competitors is they preach that they have six in-house service call people, and they have six, seven technicians on the road, and we can cover the whole country. Baloney. That's the way, you know, I get a $650 oil change at a car dealership. That's to pay for that big, massive, elaborate car dealership. Our model was not to see you again, and we mean that in the nicest, sincerest way. We'd like to see you at a trade show. We'd love if you come to our country, to our office, to visit us, whatever, and we'll do that. Some videos on YouTube where I've shown up at a customer I haven't seen since 2001 when I sold the equipment, or maybe at a trade show in between. I've seen them twice in, in five, six, seven, eight, ten years. That's a nice surprise, but we don't want to see you on a regular basis. The machines have been made here in Canada using the best suppliers I can find in Canada and USA. Machines are 65 to 85% US parts because more choices of suppliers there. And that, that enables us to give you something that you can service with a phone call. And that's a big deal. So you don't have to worry about that for years and years. And I've had literally hundreds of machines that haven't had to have a service call. Now the lasers require an exchange of the tube every 20,000 to 25,000 hours. The rhinestone robot's a bit more intensive and it comes with a toolbox with a spare parts kit of all the things you need. Why? Because if you can replace the brakes on your car and it's 10 minutes then they're, and it's simple, then why can't you do that on the rhinestone machine if we show you exactly how? Things will wear out because it's very mechanical, a little bit like embroidery but we don't want you to be dependent upon a technician. So everything is put in a place where you're able to get your hands on to see it, to service it, and it's made that simple. And the second thing is it can't be the cheapest machine like the machines from Asia because we use premium brand parts. I found out when I was in China that you can get a brand name product, but there's a Chinese version, and then there's a North American and a European version. So there's three versions. And the U.S. Canadian versions with the CSA and the UL are the highest quality components. They cost more. They take more to make. They're used from better plastic, better metal, blah, blah, blah. And they're more quality controlled. And that's all that we use. I can always make an identical looking machine and say I'm using a brand name part, but I don't have to tell you that we're using the Asian ones. And, and you may not know that, but I found that out when I was there because they're saying, you know, Mr. Robert, what part would you like? Because this is one. I said, they look the same. He says, yeah, but this one is. The, and so that's how I learned that, by going to China and figuring it out. So um, what else is there? 
you know, his accountant's concern, I said our accountant would love the fact that we could have a consumable business, kind of like when you buy an inkjet and you have costs forever and ever. And we don't have that. And I, I want to say that, you know, our goal is to have at least 50% of all decorators in the world using at least one piece of our equipment. And the only way to accomplish that is to give the best quality of a machine that needs the least amount of service that gives you the most production time. In a world where you don't repair your coffee maker anymore, you don't repair your head dryer anymore, you don't repair your shaver anymore, you don't repair your radio anymore. If you break your Apple product, it gets exchanged. They don't really necessarily repair it anymore. We live in a disposable world. So maybe I'm old school, maybe I'm counterintuitive, but that's what's going to make the difference when you need to make money with a machine. Um, what would be the most likely... Uh, are, what would be the most likely consumer customer if we go ahead with your machines? Is it more business or consumer oriented? And, and this is a, a tricky question, but we strongly believe and have been preaching for years, you need to generally, when you start out, wear two hats. Because I don't want you to change what's working in your business. So you need to continue to do what you're doing. Now, if you are contract only business to business, then continue to do that and that's perfect. And generally those people have enough business that they can add this in and it's not a problem. If you're a small business and you sell direct, I think when you are one of the early ones in the early adopters in your area, you need to create a scenario where you have one identity and one website which is contract only and you need to have the identity which is direct to consumer. Why? Because those people in your area don't cover everybody anyways and they can be a little bit fickle. And you have to do marketing on a consistent basis to make them aware that you have new ideas, new products, because salespeople are always looking for something new. When you have the direct side, you can control your destiny, and either one of those will easily cover what it costs to finance or to own a machine. So either one gives you the best of both worlds, and you can decide later on which is more labor-intensive, which is less labor-intensive, which is more profitable, which is less work, more work, whatever. You can divide it, you can sell half the business. There's a lot of things you can do. So based on your situation, when we consult and talk with you, we'll find and suggest what we think based on what your situation is. I don't want to say that over the internet on a video because we don't know who's on the other end watching it. It's kind of important to know and ask those questions first. Um, so one question is, we fear that in Canada and U.S. there is a much greater market for apparel decoration than over here in Europe. And I, and I say stop having fear and worries and start to take some action because if you focus on the problems, I can absolutely guarantee you from experience you will get exactly what you focus on. And I'm guilty of it still today and I'm still trying to correct it. Whether I focus, you know, don't hit the ball into the net when I'm playing tennis and boom, I hit it right into the net. Why? Because I train my brain to look at that. And I'm no Tony Robbins and I'm no big guru, but I did learn that over the years from the seminars and all these different people that I've learned from. And I learned it from personal experience. If you focus on, you know, what are the problems? What am I going to face? You're just going to get slammed with it and it's going to be part of your life. If you focus on what are the opportunities? Who are the customers? Who can I go to? If you're driving in your car and I'm still to this day, I have the sickness of, of saying that logo would look good in embossing, that logo would look wicked in rhinestones because I know that's a predominant female client base or 50% female client base. That would look on amazing. Oh, and with laser, that would look wicked in applique, reverse applique. I go into a mall and I can say, wow, I can do better than that. I can see the crooked stitches. I, I've been in France on the Champs-Élysées and walked into the Louis Vuitton and the Pradas and I can see that the quality of the, of the stitches of some of these products are not symmetrical. And I know customers of ours who won't let a bag out if the stitches aren't exactly equal when they go around the curb. I'm sick that way. And you will be sick that way too when you have the equipment and you make something beautiful and you always look for opportunity and you always can critique. What I'm trying to get at is if you're the type of person who drives by that cement factory and all the trucks are dirty and a mess, I want you to be the type of person who wants all the Mack trucks lined up, all the freight liners truck, uh, Mac, uh, freight liner trucks lined up. I want all the bumpers to be equal. I want all the dark green trucks and all the light green trucks. And you have to be like that for your business. You have to see opportunity everywhere. You have to give out samples to people. You have to see opportunity when somebody does something good in the community and they're some sort of charity. Send them a bunch of shirts and don't expect anything back. But with, you know, put your brand name in the collar and just get rid of some of the stuff and do goodwill. It comes back to you. So, 
you know, uh, to continue that answer, there's 13,000 plus embroidery business in the United States and there's even more screen printers and there's probably like 30% overlap. So there's 22, 25,000 decorators. And I've been to customers who have within one hour's drive 50 embroidery companies only forget about screen printers. So it could be 120, 110 within one hour drive, but they're the only ones with the laser, with the embossing machine, or with the rhinestone machine. That's where I want you to be. So when you're watching this video, forget about what's going on around you. Be different. If you do what everybody else does, you can only expect plus or minus 10% of their results. If you do what other people do, uh, what other people don't do, then you can expect to have completely different results and completely off-scale uh, over the chart, off the chart uh, results, etc. So it says, how much room do you need for the machinery? We've got that on the website explaining that and I put pictures here. You know, what type of technical demands are needed? None of our equipment is three-phase. All of our equipment is out of the crate and the most complicated one is the laser and within 45 minutes the laser is assembled and working and, and making and producing. On the embossing machine, the rhinestone machine, it's out of the crate, plug it in, warm it up, or hook up the air on the rhinestone machine and you're in business. So that's very simple. And on the laser, you need an outlet that's approximately, you know, five inches, four inches to vent out, which is probably like 10 centimeters, and you're basically done. In your, in your videos, we mentioned exclusivity for certain region and time. Can you elaborate on that? And I go, and I said I'd be blunt, right? Think about yourself and how long you're taking to make a decision. Other people have to do the same. Sooner or later, somebody else is going to get a machine in your area. Did you want to be the first? So in this particular case, I'm telling them you could have been the first for one year. You're missing your exclusivity right now because soon there's going to be somebody else. We're not sitting still. We want to sell as many as possible. Now, our goal is to sell the 50-60% of all the decorators with at least one of our machines. So that's a lot of machines. That's 6,000 plus machines or if there's 22,000 decorators in total, that's you know over 11,000 machines that we want to sell. That's our goal. So why don't you take advantage and be the first in your area and let us concentrate on selling all around, all over the place, meeting our goal. And at the end of the day, there are you know more than one donut store on a street. There are more than one car dealership on a street. There are more than one drug store on a street. And people make choices and they choose. You need to focus on what you can do with your customers growing in your area. And when you focus on that, you'll get that result. If you're focus if you're focused on other people and other things, you're just going to get problems. I'm, I'm saying that out of experience. So. It doesn't really make a difference what's going on. For example, in the city of Toronto, the greater population now is over five million people. There are several hundred decorators and they're spread all over the city and none of them are running into each other. For some reason, in West Coast uh, Washington State, we've got the most concentration of rhinestone machines anywhere in the world, I think, literally in the smallest pocket. Nobody's running into each other. Why? Because there's so much more business than available. We don't have market saturation like embroidery and screen printing, so the opportunity is vast and big and there for the taking. So hopefully you can take advantage of it. Um, so it says, we're located near the border, near Netherlands. We think there are more opportunities here rather than across the border than here. So what about the territory? I said, you know what? There are opportunities everywhere except the North Pole, the South Pole, the Sahara Desert, and other places where there's complete poverty and, and no infrastructure. Everywhere else where there's a business, where there's cars and population, there's opportunity because our things are becoming mainstream. mainstream. We're just on the beginning of the curve and you can capture that. Do you want to look at this video in a couple of years and go, you know what, I could have been there? Or you want to capture it when it's just you know, it reached its peak when we have 50% market share? So um, it says, you know, you also certify breaking even in a three-month period or we'll pay the financing. Wondering how that can be sure certainly would be nice. I said, you have to follow a program. And right now, I'm talking to everybody, you're probably doing zero marketing or very little marketing at all. And probably like most businesses, you're in a situation where your customers are coming to you with poor artwork, they're needing it very quickly, quick uh, turnover, they want a low quantity, they say, you know, could I have it yesterday, they want it cheap, then you rush and you do it, you don't charge for the rush, they pick it up late, and then they pay you slowly and they still have the nerve to complain about price. Does that sound anything like what you're dealing with as a decorator? Well, you know, you might chuckle inside. I can say that at every trade show, and this year we will end up in 2012 doing in the neighborhood of 40, 
four or 42 trade shows, I can say that in every one of those cities every day for the entire day and I will get laughs all day long and people will say, oh my God, you got a crystal ball. How would you know? Or were you working in my business? Did you talk to my wife? Because that's the problem. That's your situation. 80% of your customers are sucking your life away and you've trained them to be like that. It's your baseball park and you haven't set out the rules. What we do is we basically, this is the big secret that everybody wants to know, we identify who the top 20% of your customers are. These are the people who give you 80% of your revenue. Second thing is we determine if you know their name, if you know their shirt size, and if you know their birthday. And then we start giving you a system to communicate to them once a month so that they are in top of mind. That's called top of mind marketing. And you're probably not sending out things once a month. You're probably, as a decorator, doing things, sending it out to the customer, not even including something new or personal. And you could send them something with their logo on as a thank you gift without even asking for an order, making them aware of all the things you can do. And there's a massive list of things you can decorate. And shoemakers' kids never have shoes. You're not even doing that for yourself when you own the equipment. And we force that upon you so that you get into a new habit. And that changes everything. Because now, the 20% of customers who give you 80% of your business are appreciated, are made aware. They have the capability of buying more. They can refer better customers and customers like them to you. And instead... You're comfortable being busy with people that suck your life away, that complain, that give you lousy little jobs, that make you busy, need it rush, keep you there till all hours of the day and night and weekend, and then they don't even appreciate you and then they pay you slowly. So we want to change that. If you're willing to accept that, then I can't help you. If you're willing to find a way and want a way to change, that's what we're here about. That's what our people are trained to do to systematically get that bug out of you. We give you the tools and the systems and the support to do that. Now there's a one condition and that condition is that when you contact us you have 30 days from that date of contact or we won't do it because over the 13 years that we've been doing this we found out that there are people who perpetually procrastinate which is like a double negative. They, they're worse than procrastinators. They're perpetually procrastinating and not doing anything. And I can't help those people, and we can't help those people, and they'll stay like that. We want the group of people, probably about half of you, that want to make a significant change, that are looking for the tools and the advice. You don't want to spend, like on these bookshelves over here, um, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a year, five thousand dollars a year on training and marketing courses, because it's all generic. It doesn't help unless you go and find the one thing and apply it to the business. Then you have to figure out if that one thing even works. And because we were always decorators from the core, at the beginning of the business we had the machines and the equipment, but we couldn't afford to just have them standing in the showroom like we do today. We had to use them. And we have to create a customer base and we have to try all those things. So we're going to teach you the things that we found that worked and then you can take them, modify them, use them. And those are the tools that will help you grow your business. And that's the competitive advantage. So, um, I believe you have a sort of business model to that market approach. I think I just covered all that. And do you have experiences with it in Europe? Yeah, we have machines all over the world in all those countries I mentioned. And the rules are the same in all the countries. I know that America is like really advanced in marketing and we're inundated with marketing messages. But the principles of constant communication with your clients and top of mind marketing is a simple, simple, effective tool to stay ahead of the game and stay ahead of your competitors. Um, just asking about... Um, this is kind of a good question. It's a bit off topic of what we're doing in marketing. You know, the molds for embossing. When we started this business, it was like 65 bucks a mold your cost to do it. Now, when you're doing multiple and you're filling up a page with the different designs for left chest logo, it's coming down to under $15. So you can't even digitize properly for that sometimes. And here you can get a mold and it's made for you. It's at your door. And now in 7 to 12 seconds, you're hitting something. In any country that we've been and we sold to, whether it was South Africa, Australia, Europe, anywhere, Mexico, America, Canada, every place we've always found a dye maker who can do it for a very reasonable price very quickly. We, you can bring it in-house. And we found that it's using a CNC machine and doing it is a waste of time because somebody can do it cheaper. So don't cut your grass, don't shovel your driveway, don't make your own dyes if somebody can do it cheaper and quicker than you. 
You know, uh, I like the idea of laser can do more than only fabrics. Uh, I love the glass you engrave, but can it be done on the outside of the beer glass? Beer glass. Well, the answer is yes. If I can do it in the beer glass, I can do it on the outside of the beer glass. No problem. There's dozens of videos where we're lasering curved surfaces. The reason that these questions are coming together is because this is one of those examples where the customer are looking at more than one machine. Um, how big is the area where it can be lasered? And we're talking about uh, approximately 14 inches in diameter, essentially. And uh, he wants to do jackets, biker jackets, and, and horse saddles. And that's fine, but why don't you do the, and pick the low-hanging fruit first and do the business that pays all the bills instead of trying to find somebody who wants to do one bike jacket or one saddle. I realize that could be your business, but try and find some sort of volume. There's tons of it out there. Most people have been doing embroidery forever. Most people have been doing screen printing forever. The garments have completely changed. They're all high-tech, uh, dry wicking, moisture management, blah, 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 polyester that breathe. They look beautiful with embossing, tone on tone. They look beautiful with the laser. Oh, but wait, my customer wants color. You think that, and you would be surprised at how many people when you say your customer, by the way, your logo is nice and I know you want it in color, but your people need to wear your shirt Sundays going to church and they want it subtle, tone on tone, classy and elegant, you should try it out. You should tell your client what they need because it makes a difference. They don't always know what they want. If Steve Jobs waited for people to tell him what they want, Apple wouldn't be what it is today. He created the products that people wanted and when they saw it, they fell in love with it. And that's what this decoration is exactly like. Just wish I was Steve Jobs. No, I don't wish I was Steve Jobs. He's not alive anymore. So, um, you know, ask about the quotes. Uh, the, we'll send the quotes. Anytime you need a quote, just contact our office. We'll send it out to you. Um, what else is there? You know, concerning the fish. I didn't write the fish, but it says, Concerning the fish, I am a small fish but wanting to grow. I don't want to be a whale, but I want to be a good-sized dolphin. Well, I got news for you. Dolphins eat fish. Okay, and killer whales eat dolphins. So you need to start eating more fish right away. And I can, and the company can seriously help you, but you have to have a little bit of an instinct to want more than what you have right now. You have to have the desire to get, <clears throat> to get more out of what you're doing, to work less, to be more profitable and more effective. So if you have any more questions, let me see if i got anything else right here. That's basically it. I thank you for your time and call us if you have any questions. We'll get back in touch with you as soon as possible. Thank you.